morning. We're uh, going to start working under the hood of the truck today. Couldn't ask for a more beautiful day. Absolutely gorgeous out. No humidity. We do have the lawnmower, guys. Now, I've been running the sprinkler on mom's grass because the whole neighborhood, everything just turned brown. But you can see that I have fixed mom's grass. We're gonna have some lawnmower noise in the background today, unfortunately, but I've got my workstation set up. Lefty is in his supervisor position, keeping an eye on everything. We've got some cicadas singing. They're excited. Let's turn some wrenches. It's not bad. I mean, I just changed these, uh, I don't know, when we were up in Colorado. Yeah. But I didn't like the brand they had, so I'm going to be putting my Motocraft filters back in and getting rid of these. These were, I don't even remember what brand they were. Wow. Interesting. So this is the Motocraft. This is what I had in there. Look at the difference in the height. Wow, the Motocraft are another quarter inch. They're a quarter inch taller. They've got more surface area. See that? Interesting. So for the 7.3, you're talking FA-1618. So I'm going to be removing the airbox assembly, all of the intake pipes, all the way back to the turbo. Then the output hoses that, the, that go to the cylinder heads out of the turbo because those are getting replaced. So this is all coming out. So here's the new air conditioning compressor that we installed last year. The new belt that we installed last year. You know, the whole front of the engine is nice and, nice and dry. There's no leakage of any kind down here, oil or otherwise. Everything is nice and dry and clean up here. And that's the way we're gonna make the whole engine look. Well, as much of it as we can reach. Oh, I can see the ICP sensor in there that we also replaced last year. Injection control pressure sensor. Now I'm gonna go inside and we're gonna get the doghouse pulled out because I need to reach in from the backside to get the rest of these air hoses out of here. Stay, buddy. I know you wanna help, but there's not enough room for both of us up here. Wow, that was really sealed in there. There we go. Come help? What do you? You can't just stand out here and bark at me. Uh, I don't understand your instruction. <coughs> come on, help me, left. Come on, up in the truck, up there. There you go. That is the best diesel engine ever built. Yeah, that's the Power Stroke. Huh? You like it? See the turbo? Check it out. Soak it all in. Soak in the gloriousness that is Power Stroke. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> I just fell in love with this. This is from the wish list. We got a box showed up from our favorite jungle. Let's see what we got. Oh, did you, uh, you smell the cardboard, huh? <laughs> right on cue. I don't know what it is, buddy. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. No, it's not for you, I'm sorry. I get one. Cordless ratchet. I'm so happy. Bart, thank you, Bart. Excuse me. Are oh, you a little hung up there? You need my help? Huh? Left. Why you gotta shred it? Hey. Oh, man. Dude. What? what are you doing? <laughs> Three eighths ratchet. AC Delco. Wow, that is heavy duty. Holy smokes. Charger. It works. Of course it works. It's brand new, David. You like that? Huh? Oh, this is great. I've wanted one of these, I'm not kidding, for years. I just never, I don't know, never bought one for whatever reason. This is going right out in the toolkit. So happy. You are happy too, huh? I can hear it. I would have been up in here with the little ratchet and all kinds of extenders and stuff to try to get my hands up in there such a perfect tool for some of these really hard to reach clamps that i'm undoing you like the new tool yeah this thing is awesome this is a 3 8 drive hex bit adapter so i need to get a fat phillips screwdriver tip at a right angle to take that breather off of the valve cover so the ratchet with this adapter, and now I'm gonna get a big Phillips bit and pop it in here. Well, and there we go. So here's that breather I was talking about. Sorry about the lawnmower noise. So this goes on the valve cover, driver's side, and that's the hose that comes out of it, and it goes right into the intake. This is to the turbo input. So this thing, you can see it's a mess. I'm guessing that there's some kind of, yeah, I can kind of see some filtration packing up in there. I'm guessing this thing is just plugged all to crap or very, very dirty at the least. But this is the really rough looking part. That is oil soaked dirt and sand that's just packed to the sides of this thing. If you look online to get some instructions for removing a turbo from a 7.3, you're gonna find instructions for taking it out of a pickup truck. I can't find like a step-by-step -step for doing it out of a van. And I think it's actually a lot easier doing it out of a van. You don't have the intercooler pipes. Plus you can get right to it. You know, the turbo is right here. So it's a lot easier, I think, to do it from a van. So I've got, this V-band clamp removed from the up pipes. I've got this V-band clamp removed from the down pipe. I've got this clamp removed from the output of the turbo. I disconnected the exhaust back pressure valve arm right here. And I actually found out that the clip was missing and some mechanic had used mechanics wire. So I was able to grab a hold of this and yank it out so I actually just ordered a turbo reinstall kit and it comes with a new clip. It comes with the O-rings for the pedestal mount. Uh, it comes with everything you need to reinstall a turbo and it was like $15. So I've got that ordered. All that's left now is this bolt here and its partner right on the other side. This is the actual pedestal mount. So these are the bolts that hold the turbo bolted down. 
So I'm gonna get those cracked loose, pull them out. You know, I don't know if there's gonna be enough room to pick it up and, and get it out of here without removing this. I hope I don't have to unbolt this from the up pipes. Um, Cause these were, you know, they were a bear to get on there, but they're on there and they haven't, there's no exhaust leak. So I hope I don't have to remove this, but I may have to, we'll see. All right, let's see if we can get this thing out of here. Not too bad. There. There we go. I think I'm gonna have to take off this. There. Oh. there. Now that can come out. Okay, I think this is it, everybody. We should have a handful of turbo here in a minute. There we go. Now we can get this off so that we can replace this hose and that hose right there. That's what all this was for. And get this all cleaned up. Pretty dirty. That's the air intake from the air box, from the air filters back to the turbo inlet hose. I'm happy with that. That looks a lot better. Now this is the intake baffle. It's just a hollow box. Some people remove this and put like a, a spray can top over the, the uh, junction where this connects up, but I'm gonna leave it on. I'm just gonna clean it up. You don't really see this, but no reason for it to be dirty. back out here today. Yesterday I got the turbo removed, the air box. Uh, so this is all the air ducting that goes to the turbo, then the output from the turbo. So this morning I got this stuff all cleaned up. Um, this especially, this has the, the connection that goes to this breather that goes on the valve cover. So this is pulling fumes out of the engine like a, a PCV, positive crankcase ventilation system on a gas engine. Same kind of thing. It sucks it out of the valve cover into here and right into this intake tube, which then goes right to the turbo. And this thing was just packed with grime. It was a combination of oil and sand. And that is the worst thing to see on an input to a turbo. So but I got it all cleaned out. It's spotless now. Everything is all cleaned up. I used the super clean purple. Stuff is awesome. I, I really recommend if you got a clean, if you got a greasy job or want to clean your engine up, get the super clean. You spray that stuff on there. You barely have to wait and you just start wiping and everything comes off. I kid you not, everything comes off. The reason I took all this apart, this might seem kind of wackadoodle, but the reason I took all this apart was to replace these. 
these are the output from the turbo. So the turbo outputs to this splitter right here. And then from this splitter, it connects to these two rubber hoses that then connect right into the heads of the engine. So these are super important that they are not leaking or else you'll be losing boost. So these are obviously really old. Uh, they were held on with regular hose clamps and I didn't like the looks of them. I don't know that they were leaking at all, but you can see how dirty they are. So I ordered new ones. That's the reason I took this all apart. So here's the new ones. These are Gates 26213s, but they come with these nice um, T-bolt type clamps as opposed to the regular hose clamps. So this is why I took this all apart to get these replaced. But I also wanted to clean everything up. The top of the engine was a mess and what I think was causing it, I believe that this was causing a lot of leakage. Uh, that's what the other thing was that I ordered, uh, uh, O-ring kit for this. So those two O-rings go right there where it mounts to the valve cover. And then each of these bolts, you can see on them right there are small rubber O-rings also. So the new O-ring kit has the two small ones and the two large ones which will seal this up nice and tight to the valve cover because I, I, there was a lot of, of oil seepage around this thing. So I want to get that sealed up. I just want to get everything cleaned up so that if I am having some kind of leak or seepage that I can see it easily and identify where the heck it's coming from. The way it looked, there was no way I could tell where it was coming from. So I'm just waiting on some parts. Everything will be here in two or three days. Uh, then we can throw this all back together. I'm gonna do some more cleaning on the engine. Um, and then I'm probably just gonna go into a holding pattern as far as the engine while I wait for parts. And I'm gonna jump inside the truck. I've got a bunch of stuff to do inside the truck to make it beautiful. I'm gonna improve our comfort. We just uh, came over here. We're at the Little League fields. This is where Lefty was raised. So I used to live, uh, you see those houses there? Well, about another 100 yards past them was my house. And we used to walk over here every day. This was Lefty's stomping ground. Um, this is a pretty big little league field complex. This is where I used to, this was our home fields for when I coached softball when my daughter when Dalen played softball fast pitch and I coached for four years had a ball so this was our this was our spring and summer hangout over here and lefty he did his walks there's it backed up to some woods over there we've been through those a million times but this is where we hung out and I decided to stop over here this morning because one of Lefty's buddies, Apollo, yeah, <laughs> he knows the name, um, and Apollo's mom, Brenda, they live like where you see those that cluster of tall trees over there. That's her backyard. And we just parked and walked over there, and sure enough, Apollo was out in the backyard, and we got to see him. But I don't see Brenda. She always worked nights, so I was kind of hoping I would see her. But I don't want to make noise and possibly wake her up. But uh, so we visited with Apollo for a minute. And we're just killing a little bit of time. Lefty's got a doc appointment this morning just to get his last shot for this year um, before we head back out. I don't like to gather up his vaccinations at the same time because he had an allergic reaction a couple years ago when we did that. So we always spread them apart, the vaccinations, and just do one at a time. So he's going for his last, his last one right now. And he's going to get a Lyme disease test. I asked for that because he did have a tick bite this year. 
uh, when we first got to New York, I pulled one off of him. This way, buddy. So we'll walk back down here and get in the car. We're just like uh, three quarters of a mile from the vet's office. So this is all right in the neighborhood. We're, you know, one mile from mom's house. Like I said, we're 150 yards from what my house was. The vet's right up the corner. So we're, this is our neighborhood right here. It feels really good. Oh, fleet find and a nail. Ah, I'll put it up here at the dugout. We used to pick up all kinds of stuff when we walked over here every day. We collected leftover baseballs and softballs that were left behind. And when we were clearing out the house to hit the road, I came over one Saturday morning. There was a landscaper guy over here up in the, up in the shed in the barn getting the mower out. And I said, hey, I've got some balls I want to drop off. And he said, okay, yeah, just throw them right here. I opened up the back of the car and unloaded, I don't know, several five-gallon pails full of balls and two big plastic bins full of balls. He's like, oh, my gosh. I mean, there were probably, I'm going to say there were 500 balls altogether. Leave those there. Probably 500 balls we dropped off that I had been collecting because I used to bring them back periodically and then for whatever reason I just started storing them and <laughs> you know not all of them were 100 percent some had been waterlogged or damaged but I'm gonna say 75 percent of them were still fully good you know for practice balls come on we got to go come on